Hi viewers, you're with Property Myth Busters. My name is John Gumblebitch from Real Property Manager. Um, I'm Deborah Beck Newing from Craig Property Advisory. And I'm Ken Hugh from Avora Finance. It's great to be back. Um, we've uh, had a bit of a break, but uh, we're uh, um, back here for you to bust some more myths and contradictions and some of the misinformation that's going out in the property buying and investment landscape. And we're here today on a great topic and timely mm -hmm. uh, and that's unpacking the first home loan deposit scheme. It's a mouthful, Deborah. Yeah, FHLD scheme. The FHLD scheme. Yeah. Another great name by the government. Yeah. It's an increasing number of acronyms, in fact, number of letters in acronyms. Yeah. So to summarise, um, this is the new scheme that's um, designed to help first home buyers actually get into the market. It will commence on the 1st of January 2020, I can't believe it, 2020. Um, so uh, buyers who... Great New Year's Eve present or New Year's Day present. Yes, exactly. Um, you have to be prepared for it though. Um, and so it's really designed for buyers who have pulled together at least 5% of a deposit, um, the government will guarantee um, up to 20%. So effectively it helps them save um, the cost of lenders mortgage insurance and should technically mean that people can afford um, to take out a larger loan. But we're here to discuss whether the myth, whether it's actually going to yes. cost them. So oh, is it going to actually help them, if we read between the lines, and that's yeah. what we're here to do, is it actually going to help them, or is there some challenges with the scheme that we can see down the track? Um, yeah. Well, first and foremost, I guess, like, from a uh, broker's perspective, uh, yeah, a lot of, of first-time buyers do kind of struggle with that initial deposit, um, so savings of maybe 20000 30000 things like that. And um, although they may be applying for the first-time owners grant, which kind of, uh, if they qualify, um, gives them concessions on the stamp duty. Um, lenders mortgage insurance usually is, is can cost as much as stamp duty, um, depending on what the LVR is. So it certainly will help uh, them get into the market because uh, a lot of their savings isn't going towards the lenders mortgage insurance, which is which is uh, something that this is covering. This scheme is covering, mm -hmm. but I, I don't I don't know. I mean, it's limited to ten thousand. The, uh, support up to ten thousand. Yeah, that's interesting. Person. That's interesting, isn't it? It's so how ten thousand max? Well, I'm assuming that's per year. Per year. Yeah. So for the first, for ten thousand, I think they they would most definitely you know benefit from something like that to be able to get into the property market sooner and not have to pay lenders mortgage insurance. But I don't know what do you put. So in an LVR of um, ninety five to five percent. From your point of view as a broker, do you think that they need to be saving up for the loan mortgage insurance? In fact, that there has to be a fatter deposit. Yeah, or some money if, put if away for that. Yeah, definitely. If it's uh, if it's 90, 95, like close to like the, the absolute limit, a lot of the money goes to uh, can be as much or even more as uh, stamp duty. Um, so, so, what kind of money are we talking about here? So. Just say we're targeting Sydney Melbourne buyers of what, say, seven hundred thousand. Yeah, seven hundred thousand. Think that's reasonable. I, I think yep. it is. Yep, yep. Um, and so five percent of that is uh, thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Um, that's really good. Yeah, it's, it's um, <laughs> yeah. And so normally they would have to um, save. Well, normally they'd have to save. What one hundred and forty thousand to actually get their loan, wouldn't they? Yeah, it can be a little bit less than to do the twenty percent. Yeah, a little mm. bit less than the twenty percent. Uh, you know, well, that's, like that's ten, 10 to twelve, amount. twelve percent. I think generally it's like yeah. the the bare the bare minimum, and there's mm. like heaps of costs for lenders' mortgage insurance. It's still a substantial amount though. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really is. Considering most people, as we were saying before, mm. often forget about. Including stamp duty, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you can money in bed. Then you've got to yeah. So, what other uh, conditions are attached um, to that? Is there a price price point? Um, no, I guess. Like, 
guess it would be good to run through. Did you want to run through who that? qualifies? Yeah. So the people uh, to qualify uh, to come in yeah, January twenty twenty uh, support up to ten thousand eligible first home buyers. Um, eligible to first home buyers or those that have saved a deposit of at least five percent up to twenty percent. Um, their income is for a single if their income is less than one hundred twenty five thousand. Um, or if they're combined like a couple uh, less than two hundred thousand. Um, so you would the say the average the average first home buyer, given that they're going to be relatively young, between twenty five, say thirty five, yeah. they kind of fit into that category. Income yes. earners probably less Perfect. around mm -hmm. the average income earner. About eighty thousand. About eighty 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 five thousand. Yeah. I mean that's what um, we want, really. Yeah. The target entry properties, which doesn't specify, but with a maximum loan size determined on a regional basis, so it doesn't yeah. seem like it's specific to property price, more so loan size. Uh, there's the guarantee will cease where borrowers refinance and their home loan ends. Uh, be able to use in conjunction with the first home super saver scheme, as well as relevant state territory first home buyer grants and stamp duty concessions. Yeah, so they've got all the other things on top. So, um, you know, look, there's probably much more detail in the actual, you know, legislation that's so. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll definitely at some stage unpack, yeah. unpack all that, but uh, yeah, given, but, given time limit mm, at, at yeah. the moment to discuss it, um, uh, is this really going to help mm, the first home buyer? What, what do you think? Uh, let's, let's look at it from a short term <coughs> to long term. Short term, I think so, uh, for the 10,000 who's eligible. Long term, I don't know. Um, I mean, you mentioned a couple of uh, you know concerns, I guess, which was, do they have enough skin in the game? Because when they're assessing credit, five cents of credit, one of them is uh, character and, and uh, you know showing their ability to save and how they manage debt and things like that. Yeah, so that would, that would be quite a, quite a large one when considering that criteria, the saving criteria, and how, or is there a pattern of good savings given it's such a small deposit? Um, do you see any challenges around around that? Yeah, I mean, it's guaranteed by the government. But that, so one thing that I'm actually quite curious to know, and, and I'm sure that uh, as we kind of progress uh, closer to the time when uh, it does commence, all the lenders um, will kind of have to wrap their head around you know, what that means for them and how, what the logistics are um, in the back end, how their credit policy, um, you know, incorporates this, this new um, scheme. But I guess that's a couple of questions that come to mind, you know, is it going to be across all lenders? Is it going to be specific lenders? Yeah. Do the lenders opt in for it? Is it, um, you know, and if so, how does that work? I, there's a lot of questions. Uh, I guess that I have, you know, being a government. Logistically. Yeah, logistically. The, the, um, like the people that you're helping who are first home buyers, yep. um, you know, on a day to day basis, the people you're meeting, do you think they would benefit from something like this? Yeah, for, the, for those who qualify, yeah. Yeah, like and because know. it would leverage them earlier yes. into, particularly in Sydney with the market that's moving upwards. Yeah. Is, or, yeah. Did I just put words into your mouth? No, no, no. I think it would, like it just reduces the amount of uh, capital that they need to contribute. So the two things usually, two major restrictions for getting into a property market from a credit perspective is the borrowing capacity, um, which we're seeing, you know, things positive things come out of that. Um, but the yeah the the savings that they have to contribute to complete the purchase because everyone knows that you can't borrow the property price and costs. Um, so there is a certain amount of money that you need to save up to. <laughs> to have a buffer. Yeah, to have a buffer yeah, and to yeah, kind of proceed. Does everyone really know that? But anyway, that's the issue. Yeah. So, so in the short term, okay, we've got we've got some help there. Mm. We've got a leg in into the market. Long term, looking at the numbers um, based on their equity position, um, repayments over the years to pay off the actual loan. Um, in the long run, it looks like the numbers are pretty far apart from each other than you would um, going in at 5% versus going in at, at 20%. Yeah. Um, so in the, in the long run, we can see that on an average uh, loan of 700000 that over a 30-year 30, 30 period, um, there's a vast, vast difference um, in the interest that they're paying 
and of course the amount of the weekly or monthly repayments mm. as well. Yeah, but like that, that's worst case scenario. So we we have got should we talk about the numbers that we've yeah. got in front of us? Yeah. So do you want to read, read those out or yeah. in that? Oh just just briefly let's touch on, on this. Um, the total repayments on the five dollar deposits with the uh, oh, five first, uh, sorry uh, five percent deposit with the <coughs> FHLD scheme uh, would be just over a million dollars, one point one million dollars over the term of the uh, over so the that loan. Total repayments, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the twenty percent deposits, uh, just under nine hundred fifty thousand. So they'd save about one hundred fifty. One hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Um, okay. And, but see, my argument is that if... That's if they hang on for 30 years. Yeah, but, you know, if you pay a little bit more, if you use really good structures, um, so you're using your offset correctly, if you buy the right property where you actually can um, add, like, build equity by doing, you know, a little polish up of the actual property, or, um, you know, building a granny flat or renting out, you know, a component of the home so that, you know, you can pay things down. Um, it's not, you know, saying that everyone's going to um, take all that time, the full time, sure. to actually pay yeah. the property down. So, so again, if, if they're going in for long term, which let's say the way things are going at the moment, uh, with affordability, mm. that, that may need to hang on for some time because mm. they may not move into the next home very easily given the price projections um, mm. in, in the future. So they have to be smart about it, but also sensible in the sense of it's great having this scheme and it's all exciting, and, but this is an, we're talking about an emotional buyer here. Mm. This is a first home buyer. Mm. Um, and the emotions can get the better of you when actually purchasing. So what in fact is saying is that the bare fundamentals of investing into a property has to be solid if you're going in for the long haul. Yeah. Yeah, so you still need to make a really good choice. You need to think of ways to pay that loan down quickly, all of those sorts of... Um, Buy the right type of property in the right location that yeah. down the Not track whether it's yeah. 10, 15, 20 years or longer. In McMansion suburb, yeah. Yeah, um, that's, going to perform, that's actually going to perform yeah. um, to leave you in a better state than when you first started. Mm. Yeah, one thing that I would probably mention, uh, there's two items there. I guess uh, the, the cost of having a home loan with only 5% deposit versus 20% deposit, there's going to be savings there, of course. Um, but I guess it's, it's contrasting that to opportunity costs as well. So if you don't get into the market sooner mm -hmm. in, in a rising market, um, you may you know, see yourself having to chase the market up. Of course, if it goes sideways or uh, down, then that's a different story. Mm -hmm. um, so, but the other thing as well, I noticed that uh, with refinancing as well could be interesting. So making sure that you are choosing a property that uh, you know, you're probably keen to stay on and taking some of the uh, factors and goals um, of the applicant and the borrower, what they're wanting to do with that property probably makes sense because the if they do refinance and they are above the 80%, generally 80% threshold for lenders mortgage insurance, they might have to pay it again. So be, to be able to refinance, Good you know, so then there's questions about, you know, do you want to go down the fixed, ra uh, fixed rate or not, etc. So like there's a lot of um, small ideas, <laughs> items that kind of come into play. Um, but yeah, I thought I might just, uh, point that one out as well because when you are yeah. borrowing as little as possible and in the middle of my territory refinancing can be um yeah it can be difficult yeah and what about um like your opinions on will this bring more people into the market and thereby drive the prices up anyway so they're constantly chasing i, I mm -hmm. have to say what i think um like given that so will it spur demand yeah and chase yeah. prices up yeah um Given that they're only offering it to yeah, ten thousand, that's why they did it. Yeah, maybe, yeah. That's, maybe why. that's why they kept it. So, yeah, why they kept it at only ten thousand loans, and we haven't defined whether that's like because I can see, I can see that, where if they were handing it out to any yeah. home buyer uncapped, mm -hmm. that could potentially spur the market yeah. on yeah. because we know that we know that there's demand. Oh, there um, really and, is and now. And supply mm -hmm. slowing down. But, but okay. I'd like to know how they're going to select. 
which like is it going to be first in the stress is this going to be like as soon as it ticks over first 10,000 in you're good to go or is yeah, it more see, a I think um, first home buyers are really really savvy the ones that I see um, are really really good at getting their property into their hands and and the nuances of all of it. And so they're usually um, quite prepared and like ready to go. <laughs> I, I would like to see uh, your, your client. My clients are usually like, hey, I've signed a, uh, an application form. I need to sort out my finances. I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, anyway. well, that's because I get my clients like after they've done their finance. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so... Well, well, we'll we'll definitely look into it, um, dive deeper into what all this means. Uh, yeah, we're just conscious of time. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we will dive deeper into um, this loan scheme so things uh, unravel. Mm. Um, and uh, have another session around yes. what, what it all means and uh, um, will it bring joy uh, to the first <laughs> home? <laughs> to the first home buyers. Okay, so thanks very much for watching. We love your feedback. Um, so please join the Property Mythbusters Facebook group to send us questions or myths you would like busted. You can also contact us directly through our social media channels. So thanks very much. Goodbye. See you next time. See you next time.